Welcome to a tutorial about power, electrical power, its manipulation and generation. The basics, which most people don't seem to know, one coil with the magnetic field going by it will produce some AC power. That AC power is not really usable. It's called wild AC. It just, it, it, it just doesn't have the right characteristics for use in general. This is why in an, an alternator the power is first rectified to DC and then it's processed again, if desired, into good mains quality AC. Or DC is directly usable with um, motors and things uh, and electronics. So this is, uh, this is, a, but this, getting this good quality DC is the first step to using the power. This AC, this AC power can be measured, or this DC power can be measured. But in either case, using that power is not informative. The power needs to be measured, correctly measured. So the uh, most common stator configuration is the Y star. It um, consists of three phases or three coils per phase. Um, obviously, if you have one coil, you have one phase, and you have no alignment issues. But when you get more complex, it needs to be a three coil stator so that uh, three coils per phase so that they are 120 degrees apart, mechanical degrees. Um, again, this AC can be measured per phase or correctly rectified, it can be measured as the DC converted to DC. Uh, so for a, for, for a multi-phase application having this rectifier is, a real, is really handy then you've got the DC and you know what it is for all three phases. Um, the uh, Output of this configuration rises with speed and uh, volts over amps, so you get things like 10 volts at 5 amps. Those are just numbers out of the air. Uh, whereas a delta, which I'm not going to talk about here, rises amps over volts, 10 amps over 5 volts. It seems wonky at first. But it all turns into the same thing, electrical amps, I mean electrical watts, amps times volts. So, I've, I've said some of this stuff already. Um, the, the what and the why of correct... PMA stator design. Three coils per phase. Connected in series. Um, that's a little distracting. The The number of pulls on the on the rotor 
must be a multiple of 4 so that there's a relative interval of 90 degrees between those poles. And this, that ain't, that ain't inside any motor you can buy anywhere. It's got to be a machine that's optimized to function as a PMA or purpose, or purpose made. The, um, the, and this, this explains what and why, again, um, the process, the electrical process, see, the generation of electrical power is, is always a con, a, a complex thing. You've got a force that becomes electrical power. Um, water, falling water is converted into electrical power. Wind blowing is converted from mechanical to electrical power. Uh, in the case of OU output, however, instead of um, a natural energy source, we provide an artificial energy, energy store source to get the system started, batteries or solar or what have you. But again, um, over unity is not about looping or perpetual motion. You just, anyone has those in their head, they need to just get rid of them. So, most people don't understand that a generating coil has to be made a certain way with certain size conductor and a certain cross section uh, with the resultant uh, limited number of layers. There's only going to be five or six layers in such a coil. I'll show one in a minute. So, this is a decent generating coil. It's a Brooks coil, square cross section, made with 16 gauge wire. That is the smallest wire you want to use for this, uh, for a power generating coil. Should be 14. But, I think one can prove it. Prove a concept with 16 gauge conductor. So, um, okay, I didn't do a graphic for the for the uh, the rotor configuration, but you just imagine a circle with a magnet at 12, 3, 6, and 9 uh, clock. Then that's your basis. So you can have four or eight or 12 coils on there. And, and be good. Or 16. That's, that's the story. Thanks.